others have to meet uh, a number of the research people within the SEC focused on crypto assets or digital assets. And we have found them to be extremely thoughtful, extremely knowledge Very positive. And I, I think the outlook is bright for a, Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, and we do think it will be in January. Um, after being denied several times by the SEC without hearing from anyone at the SEC, uh, we we and others uh, we know uh, have gotten questions from the SEC, very thoughtful, detailed, technical questions. Uh, that's a very positive move. And it's not just one um, set of questions, it's follow-up questions. That is really good. Now, you ask if the SEC is data-driven. Uh, we have had the opportunity, as many others have, to meet uh, a number of the research people within the SEC focused on crypto assets or digital assets. And we have found them to be extremely thoughtful, extremely knowledgeable, and um, and uh, actually a great source of comfort, frankly, because we don't want uh, we don't want uh, an ETF, a, a spot Bitcoin ETF, um, to get the green light if there are any uncertainties that the SEC may have. So I think we're answering those uncertainties one by one. Each of the um, uh, filers for a spot Bitcoin ETF. And uh, I think the dialogues are, are very positive. And I, I think the outlook is bright for a, Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, and we do think it will be in January. Uh, famous last words, don't want to say <laughs> we know anything uh, because we don't. Uh, but it's just the actions of the SEC that are leading us to that conclusion. Um, January 10th is the date specifically that a lot of folks are watching here. You know, prices have been rising in advance of anticipation for approval. Um, do you think yeah. they will continue to rise if indeed the spot Bitcoin ETFs are approved? Well, uh, in the very short term, because of the big move we've had, uh, and it's an anticipatory move based on uh, the expectation that uh, a spot Bitcoin ETF will be approved, one or more, and it probably is more. Uh, so there has been a big anticipatory move. Um, those who have been moving in and enjoying some nice profits will probably, quote unquote, sell on the news. That's uh, an expression that traders use. Uh, so you anticipate the event, bid up the price, and then sell on the news. Now, uh, but that will be very short term because what we think is going to happen here is that the SEC is going to be giving Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin uh, ETF, the green light for institutional investors to participate. I think a lot of institutions have been reticent before the SEC approves a spot Bitcoin ETF to do very much at all in, in uh, the crypto asset world. And all we need is for the trillions of dollars in institutional assets out there to allocate maybe 0.1% or 0.2% to, uh, to an ETF, uh, which will be one of the easiest ways to gain exposure and one of the most efficient ways to gain exposure to, to Bitcoin. Uh, and that will move the price significantly. And, and just for some perspective here, Right now, we're at uh, 19.5 million Bitcoin outstanding. Uh, the, the system is mathematically metered to uh, stop at 21 million units. So right. scarcity value is beginning to have an impact, especially because as we look at long-term holders, those holding and not moving Bitcoin for one year, those are up to 15 million units or Ka 15 million Bitcoin. Kathy, just quickly, sorry, because there are there are a handful of, of spot Bitcoin ETFs that are looking for approval. We've talked to you before, we've talked to others before that the SEC would likely approve all of them or deny all of them, not just pick and choose. Um, how do we know which is going to be the winner, right? Because if I look at other type of, say, commodity or currency ETFs, usually there is one 
that commands the large bulk of the assets. Do you think that's what's going to happen here? It will be a few and it will be the most liquid. And uh, so if, um, if we're looking at our competitive advantages, we believe there, there, there are three. Um, one is, and, and this is all well known, this is no secret, uh, but we've been doing research on Bitcoin since 2014. That was our first paper. And uh, as others were naysaying it, we were out there uh, banging the drum saying, this is a new asset class. And our uh, salespeople, our distribution partner, has been educating and advisors over this time because we have held uh, uh, GBTC in our portfolios and they needed to understand uh, what it was all about and how important and profound an investment we thought it was going to be. So we thought, we, we've been there uh, for a long time. We were there very early. We know a lot about it and we have three full-time crypto uh, analysts. Now, the other, uh, the other thing that we have going for us is a partner in 21 shares. And uh, 21 shares is the largest pure play crypto ETP, so exchange traded product provider in the world. It's located in Europe. It has uh, launched 40 funds in the last five years. So it has uh, been through booms and busts already and has been tested. So, and and others who are in uh, the running cannot say the same thing. Right. So, yeah, we're trying to, um, we're trying to obviously uh, uh, emphasize those, those strong points. There, others have their own strong points as well. Um, and those who uh, have the most liquidity have uh, the most to, to win. We do think often in the ETF world, it is winners, you know, right. one or two or three maybe winners take most. Yeah. Um, and one other thing just to emphasize, we have in the last few months launched five um, crypto ETF, digital asset ETFs based on the futures, which the SEC has approved. And uh, we've wanted to do it for a few reasons. One is to prove that we have uh, the infrastructure provider as a partner uh, uh, and that the rails are working, and they are. Right. Uh, and Kathy, finally, I just wanted to, to come back around, circle back around to your to your benchmark um, fund, RK. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it seems here that your big bets have been pretty consistent over the past few years. You've, you've moved them around in terms of weighting, um, but they've been pretty consistent. And I'm, I'm curious here, um, going into 2024, are there entirely new areas that you might be looking? Are there new stock ideas that you're hitting upon as we go into 2024 and beyond for that matter? Yes. Well, um, during the two years, the innovation was in a true bear market when when the fear of interest rates and then the actuality or the reality of interest rates moving up just, you know, crucified innovation stocks. Um, we concentrated our portfolio towards our highest conviction names this year. Now that we've paid our dues, interest rates are up. We think uh, we're through the worst of it. Uh, now what you're seeing is we're diversifying once again. We're adding back stocks, some stocks that we sold, and we are looking forward, to, especially in the AI space, but in other sp innovation spaces as well, we're looking forward to the IPO window opening again. What we're seeing in the private markets right now, especially since we have a venture fund as well, is there are still down rounds taking place. It is astonishing to us that the private markets lag the public markets by so much, so much time, almost a year's time. And uh, so we're looking for IPOs uh, and we'll be eager investors. So you'll see us further diversifying as the IPO window uh, well, opens up and we think that will happen as interest rates uh, 